I'm Sharon Bill, welcome to my YouTube channel. I've enjoyed a break over the Christmas holiday period, but I have to admit I'm really thrilled to be back on timetable. I'm especially pleased to be back at choir, and that's made even more joyous because we're singing Handel's Messiah this time. Over the past year or so, I've really enjoyed singing lots of different things, quite unusual things, but it's always great to go back to the old faves. And as I've been sort of browsing through my old score, I see it's starting to fall apart a little bit and I shall be reluctant to get rid of it and replace it. I'm hoping to make it last a little bit longer. And I see some of the notes that I've scribbled in previous performances and it's quite funny really. I think, you know, how infantile some of my comments really are. And so it's like revisiting an old friend, just seeing the copy again, let alone singing the work. I've sung it many times. And, um, it reminds me of some previous performances, some of which did not go so well. I remember one particular performance, we had a guest conductor. He was a really eminent conductor, but of course we only get the one day rehearsal with him and the orchestra. We get a few hours in the day and then we have the performance at night. And each conductor brings something new to the performance and this particular conductor wanted to bring a, a Baroque authenticity to it. So we were singing with period instruments uh, and that was great because the pitch for Baroque instruments, the tuning is a little bit lower and so the high notes didn't feel quite so scary. So we really appreciated that. But he was really going for the Baroque timing or what we presume would have been that Baroque timing. I guess nobody was there, so we were only guessing. Um, but we wanted to go where the dotted rhythms become double dotted or even triple dotted actually. And it seems that it's not only amateur choirs that don't pay attention to the conductor all the time. And the orchestra just really, really weren't looking. And I do remember the performance, it got so bad where we were all so out of time because the orchestra were not watching the conductor at all. And it was so dreadful that we had to actually stop the performance. The conductor just brought everything to a halt right at that bar where everything had just gone so wrong it was beyond repair and then started us off again. It was dreadful. However, although we were kind of mortified thinking this is it, what this is the worst performance we've ever done, we read a review of the performance uh, in a later paper and nothing was mentioned about the disaster at all. Just things like, oh yes, Ceramic City Choir, uh, once again, uh, wondrously performed, such and such, and no mention, nobody seems to have noticed. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, so we somehow got away with it. Another performance that brings, uh, is brought to mind, I remember an ex-Prime Minister was conducting us and he was a very, very luminary figure. However, I wonder if his fame was based more upon his sort of political prestige than his musical ability because it was the most terrifying performance that I have ever, ever been in. Again, we had only had the one afternoon rehearsal and then we got the concert later that night and there was also uh, because he was a very famous conductor uh, there was also a photographer wandering around taking repertoire and then I, I always remember the picture of uh, the cellist and he just got caught on camera with his head and his hands on his cello like an utter despair but I really wish I could have got one of those photographs. We were all so exhausted and things just weren't going well at all. And um, the conductor was just vaguely wafting his bat on, not really in time, or it certainly didn't seem it to us. And um, he was kind of wafting for the altos to come in here when the actual altos were positioned over here. We were just in, um, chaos really somehow we managed to hold it together just by listening to each other so actually um it made us take a little bit more responsibility for our own singing and we somehow managed to keep the performance going um but it was quite terrifying i do remember that well and actually there was another incident where um 
it was particularly embarrassing because this eminent conductor had particularly asked that we have what was then the new Watkins Shore edition. Before that was the old Prout edition, which I think was full of quite a lot of mistakes that the editors had missed. And he was really, really insistent that we have this new Watkins Shore edition. Because he was a famous conductor, lots of the chorus went to him afterwards and asked for their copies to be signed. I didn't, I'm not really into that. I'm not one for gathering autographs. And a choir member, embarrassingly went to the conductor and he smuggled an old Prout edition in and just covered it with brown paper, presented it to this really famous um, person, asked him to conduct, uh, sorry, asked him to autograph it and then the conductor had said, oh, I see this is a Prout, I'd asked you not to use these and it was so shameful and actually I do think that at that time the conductor um, did then go and tell our musical director and I think that chorus member actually got sacked from the choir. I don't think I've ever heard of that happening in our, in our choir at any other time. So the misdemeanor was so embarrassing for the choir that he actually got sacked. I think Messiah is a very famous piece. Everybody seems to know it and possibly that's because of the Alleluia Chorus and yet there are so many delightful pieces. My particular favourites are um, Or We Like Sheep. It's so joyous and bubbling and the sort of wandering semi-quavers really do depict the um, wandering off of little sheepies. Uh, I really love that. Um, surely he has borne our griefs. That's um, beautiful with really, really uh, strident, heartfelt harmonies. I absolutely love that. And I do really love the uh, joyous for unto us a child is born. And every conductor has their own take on things. And I'm just a little bit concerned that we just um, perhaps don't look at the conductor as much as we should. And I'm really concerned that we don't just go yomping off on automatic pilot because there are some people in our choir who've sung this more than I've had hot dinners really. And yet I'm sure that Anthony will have his own take on things. Even things like I noticed at rehearsal last night, we're taking breaths in slightly different places or he wants emphasis on slightly different parts of the phrasing and he's bringing new things out of it all the time. So hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later, we are still exploring new things that Messiah did. The most famous part of this is the Alleluia Chorus, where still today the tradition of the whole audience standing is still copied. It's um, it's quite moving, but it makes me laugh a little bit. I think, oh, sit down. Um, and nobody really knows why that is. Rumour is that, so King George I, on the opening arresting bars of the Alleluia Chorus, stood up and we presume that's because he was so moved by the music and, and you can imagine that happening because it is an amazing choral piece. However, we don't know that. He could have been standing up because he got a bad case of pins and needles or perhaps gout was hurting or something like that. But for whatever reason, King George I stood up on that performance and so etiquette meant that the rest of the audience must therefore stand as well. If the king stands, so does everybody else. And from that one performance, still now, hundreds and hundreds of years later, the audience stands. I do remember some of my friends coming to listen to us when we were singing this and of course the Alleluia Chorus struck up and the whole audience stood up and, and, and I'd forgotten to warn them that this happened. And I could see them in the audience sort of looking around thinking, what's going on? We better stand up then and standing there looking completely confused. It's a marvellous thing though and I absolutely love it and it's just so wondrous to be part of that and I am really looking forward to finding out what Anthony will do with this next performance. So I'm really excited for this new year, new musical adventures and uh, lots in store. I hope you've enjoyed listening. I've put a few uh, links in the cards and in the descriptions to some of my favourite choruses from this piece, but I do suggest you give it a good listen. It's well worth listening to. Thanks for listening to me. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.